Hey everyone, we're at the Height Suite at Convitex 2023, and we last covered Height in December with a bunch of prototypes that are now becoming reality. So they have a lot here we're going to go through today. Uh, this is a distro plate for the Y60, so you can see it's a quarter mount distro plate. It goes right behind the glass. We're going to come back to this and talk about it. They also have a final version of the thick Q60 radiator. Yes, by the way, that did become the name. They weren't sure in December. It's the name now, and it does have two Cs. So there's the thick Q60 uh, in final form. It has some actually really interesting elements to it. So let me grab a fan over here. For example, there's a thermistor in the outside of the fan frame, which if you saw our 7900 XTX reference design coverage previously, similar idea to that, different execution. Uh, and then additionally, there's a bunch of changes to the fan connectors with height going as far with Ego to call a four pin PWM connector legacy. But we're gonna talk about why they're doing that with these. Other than that, updates to the Y40, there's a Snow White version and uh, there's a whole bunch of LED stuff and software to talk about, so let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Lian Li Lancol 216. The Lancol 216 is a high quality mid-range case with uniquely shaped and molded front intake fans that maintain an effective high flow cooling solution while keeping the case in the mid tower form factor. The case also has a movable motherboard tray to maximize installation and build options, and it has heavy ventilation that allows good cooling performance evenly throughout the case. Learn more at the link in the description below. We're going to start with the Y60 distro plate just because the most straightforward thing here. So that's the plate. This has hookups for a DDC or D5. It has adapters for them. It does not include one. So you'll bring your own pump for this and then use one of the included adapters. It's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it sits in the full corner of the Y60. It makes it a, a narrower, taller plate as a result, but allows you to just go for a looks angled build. And this is where you would mount the LCD uh, replacement that we covered from height previously. So the distro plate ends up being $120. It's got about, it looks like 10 different spots you can connect either for uh, fill port, drain, uh, or tubing. So that's really all there is for the Y60 distro. They've got an RGB strip on the side. Uh, height has gone completely insane with RGB everything, but they're actually building some software I didn't hate for it. So we're gonna look at that today too. The software uh, links things together pretty cleanly, unlike a lot of the RGB software we've looked at, like say IQ. Uh, let's move on to another simple one, the Y40 update. So this is just a Snow White version of it. They've gone for as white of a white as they can. They made some new custom white fans for the back and the bottoms. So it's the same fan configuration, same case in every way as the Y40, except white everything. And then the pricing is also supposed to be the same. Next one, getting into the more complicated stuff. So the thick Q60 cooler, this is what we covered in December. Uh, the main thing Height is going for is size. So Height is building for its own cases where the Y60, the Y40, they're saying they sell enough of them where they're not too concerned about compatibility with the rest of the market. Uh, it will cause problems in most of the cases on the market because with the size and you end up at a total of 84 millimeters between the fans, which are 32, and the radiator. And that's how you end up utilizing the whole side intake channel on the case here. I don't know off the top of my head what else this would fit. Height says it should be compatible with a few other cases on the market, uh, but you would basically be buying into their ecosystem. And at $300, it is a very expensive cooler, but Height also has been adamant about selling the performance side of it. So not just looks with the screen attached to the pump block housing, but also uh, Height is claiming that it can beat a 360 millimeter cooler ISO noise and uh, that would be with the standard thickness for the 360 versus this thickness. So you're basically looking at a difference of the pump and a difference of the radiator and the fan thicknesses at that point, but otherwise ISO noise, or in other words, noise that normalized between the 360 and this is a 240 with the two 120 fans, except it ends up being a little bit taller than 280. I think it's about 288 millimeters tall because of the extension up here. There's a few other things that are interesting too. I, I'm not gonna pick this one up because it falls apart because it's a prototype, but uh, there's two pumps in it. So it's running a dual pump design. This is an Apple Tech style pump. Apple Tech is the one that we keep bringing this up at all the different suites we go to. Uh, they're the ones that struggled recently with some both MSI and Lian Li issues. Lian Li made it very clear to us that they have enforced a quality standard with their supplier at this point, and uh, so did MSI and Height said something similar. So it sounds like the Apple Tech concerns with, the, basically the issue was they were doing a second pass, soldering on some of the radiators, 
flux was getting left in the radiator, they weren't flushing it, and it was corroding. That should be fixed now, in theory, and height benefits from everybody else suffering in this case because they're coming out later. So anyway, that's the pump supplier. They run at 4,400 RPM. Uh, as stated, there's two of them. And then for the fans, we get into some of the other interesting aspects where uh, Height's running LCP plastic for the blades. So it's a, the liquid crystal polymer. It keeps coming up at every, uh, every fan that's launching right now on the high end is moving to these. And the main reason, just to recap it again, that LCP is beneficial, moving to LCP allows getting higher performance by pushing right up against the edge. Height is, I haven't measured this, but height sand is about 0 0.4 millimeters or so uh, of depth from, or distance between the housing and the outer wall of that blade. Now, as for the thermistor on this, it ends up mounted on this side. And in the system next to me, you can see they've got the fans on the inside of the system for uh, mostly for showcasing them. That means that the thermistor ends up against the radiator, which is one of the more valuable places to put it. One of my concerns when I heard about the thermistor initially was it basically becomes useless if it is purely for intake, say without a radiator in front of it, like if you've got it right up against a mesh panel or something, because then you're just measuring the external ambient temperature, which isn't useful for adjusting the fan speed. But if it is measuring effectively in this instance, the uh, exhaust more or less is pulling, but it's still exhaust of the radiator, you at least get it warmed up so you can see uh, indirectly the liquid temperature, the load the CPU is under. It's going to be a little bit latent because you're moving from liquid to air and uh, typically the latency on liquid temperatures is fairly long. But it's a cool idea. It was really interesting for the 7900 XTX and we were excited about that because you can have another variable to play with for adjusting fan curves. And the fan curves that Height has are actually really interesting. Normally, when a company says, we have software, I immediately try to end the conversation so I can focus on something that is more visually interesting. This was pretty cool, though. Uh, so this reminds me of the Unreal Engine Blueprint system, where what they've done, it takes a second to understand the layout, but it actually does make sense. The sensor panel basically is over here. So you see CPU uh, sensor, GPU sensor, and then, in this case, cooler. So then you have those sensors centrally is your fan curves, which you can adjust or add. Uh, and then on the right is some component temperatures. So let's expand one of these where uh, basically similar to the blueprint system, you drag over to a curve like this one. It does look complicated, but uh, I, I mean, I think it is mostly intuitive once you look at it a little bit. They could probably do some more tweaking on the UI though. But uh, this is the curve that it, expands out. You can rename it. It's got a min temp value, so you can set this max temp value. And then they have the speed adjustments and the response time, or in other words, the hysteresis. Uh, and then let's choose one that's going somewhere. So this is a flat curve. And is this currently 10%? Is that, yeah. So this is a 10% flat curve. And this is going over to these two devices. And you can see how, as you hover, it all highlights. So, so what Height's doing here, is kind of what they're going to have to do with the software ecosystem approach they're taking. Because uh, if you're going to rely on software like, say, IQ, it really needs to not be a giant meme. And actually, speaking of IQ being a giant meme, uh, this has a performance tab that I'm pretty happy about. We'd have to test to see how well it works. But in the performance tab, they've got polling rate adjust. So you can see here it's currently set to about three seconds. You can adjust upwards of five minutes uh, for the widget data or down to, is that really 0.5 seconds? So 500 milliseconds. And that would theoretically reduce the performance impact on the system. Uh, and then they've got similar changes here for output resolution of RGB streaming devices and then the RGB streaming frame rate because the display on the Q60 can actually go 60 FPS as well, uh, which I don't think we really talked about yet. Now, one other thing with the fans, in addition to the thermistor, though, they're doing an accelerometer. My question was, why? And Height says its plan, and this is only a mock-up representation right now on the screen, but its plan is to be able to use the accelerometer to detect the orientation of the fan and use, I guess, some combination of the accelerometer with cabling and how it's cabled or connected to determine the location of the fan in the system. So in software, you get a layout, something like this. Uh, and 
I, I mean, I suppose it would make it a little more intuitive to adjust individual fan speed if you know where it is, but not what system fan header or whatever it's connected to. So last thing to cover here is the connection for all of this. Uh, RGB is, has been, and will continue to be a nightmare to cable, but every company is trying to approach it with their own solution. So you've all likely seen the Unifan several years ago introduced the fan to fan linking in a very successful way. Height is trying to go a little bit of a different direction here. So they have these Nexus connectors, they're calling them, that are supposed to replace the legacy uh, cables, which again are just four pins or standard RGB connectors as well. And the goal for this currently prototype but close to final magnetic cable is that you can link these, well actually this is a four pin, but you can link these to other devices. So on the table right here, We've got a terminating end. This would connect to a fan. So the magnetic uh, pads end of the connector, they are polarized. There we go. Connects to the fan like that. Now I'm going to disconnect so it doesn't blow into the mic. And then that runs into an RGB strip, which uh, Height's got two kinds here. This then connects to another type of connector which I guess is that the type C, Nexus type C. So it's not a fully standardized type C. In other words, you wouldn't use that to charge your phone, but it connects to a type C-esque cable. That goes down through this sleeved cabling to what they're calling a portal. And the portal device has a magnetic cover, it feels like, that hides all of the cabling for all these other devices and they can daisy chain. So that's the, really the main thing or the only point of interest I thought was that uh, you can connect an LED strip to a fan uh, to the hub if you want and also to the Q60 cooler. So it doesn't have to be fan to fan or strip to strip. It can all connect and it is magnetic. Uh, I think that covers most of this stuff. So there's a lot we can do with this. We haven't even gotten into the software. They have like a whole, we'll show some footage of it, whole demo in the other room, including uh, an entryway that either is supposed to be like walking into an IMAX or like a modern illustration of what Hunter S. Thompson went through when he wrote Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. All right. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We have a lot more to talk about here. There was an overwhelming amount of uh, technical detail, which is actually great because normally we don't actually, we don't get numbers like what are the inner and outer tube diameters? By the way, it's a 17 and 10.5 in the direction that makes sense. So we'll cover all this as we get the parts in for review, but thank you for watching. Subscribe for more as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And we'll see you all next time.